Mr. President. I'd like to introduce Pete Flaherty, Chairman of Citizens for Reagan. Yes. Hello, sir. Hi. How are you today? Yes, Excellent. Very good. Well, Beautiful good. day outside. I think spring is coming. I have the fingers crossed. Why don't you move on? This sure. Side, well, this is right. a Bill Bennett from New York. Thank you. All right. I have a tie for you from the New York Times Exchange because I wasn't there when you were there. Got a bull and a bear on it. Well, thank you very much. Nancy wanted to but that's a tough topic, so. Ah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. This is Wynn Weaver from Harrisonburg, Virginia. Hi, Mr. How President. Are you? I watch you longer every day in my career and every day. Thank you. I'm also chairman of the Board of Realization in California for 24 years. I've been proud of Wynn, which means I appreciate your support very much. Well, thank you. God bless you. Tom Feigl. Yes, Washington. I've seen you both. Let's get the vegan thing home, not the president thing. Good for you. <laughs> My wife, Angelica, sir. Oh, hello there. It's, well, it's nice to see you. Thank you. All right. This is Dave Robinson from the Great Northwest. Yes. Seattle, Mr. President. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. We bring you greetings from, you know, stay the course and, you know. Thank you. You're doing a marvelous job. Thanks, God much. love you. This is Janet Buckley, who's here in Washington. Hi. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. This is Father Gomer de Paul from Long Island. Mr. Well, president, I am the president of the Catholic Traditionalist Movement, which makes for about 15 million Roman Catholics in the country. And I want you to know our love and respect and affection for you is unchanged. You are doing God's work, sir. God will not let you down. God bless you, yes. No, and he won't. And that goes for Mrs. Lee, too. Every husband you have. God <laughs> bless you, sir. This is John Burke from the President. Oh, indeed, I. Right. God bless you. Doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. And I'd like to introduce my son. Well, Mr. Hello, President, it's an honor, sir. Well, nice to see you. Thank you for the best. All right. Up in New England. <laughs> this is Ken Bone, who's the director of Citizens oh, for Reagan. Nice to see you. My wife is Nicaraguan. I just want to say, keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. This is Mr. Kilgo from Hawaii. Good to see you, Mr. President. And we're behind the committee percent. And treat our girl, Matsaki, good because she's going to be a rock. Oh, I have a dinner party the other night. Or I mean, it was a dinner. <laughs> She's great. She's going to be good for the Republican Party. Aloha. Sir, this is Eddie Bourne of fellow California. Well, hi. How are you, Mr. President? How are you? Nice to meet you. Oh, you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. My parents are in England. You said they thought and said that. Best wishes. I'm very good for you. Well, thank you. Thanks very much. I understand we're supposed to be a group. Well, sir, we are a group. We have 100,000 members around the country, and we're all pulling for it, believe me, on a, on a daily basis. And uh, some of our best friends are in this room, and we wanted to uh, show them how deeply we appreciate their efforts. Well, I know, and, uh, and I like the title of your group. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, and I am most grateful. I know what you've been doing and what you've been doing recently in regard to the latest vote up in the, in the Congress. I was watching on C-SPAN, watching the, or CNN, watching the vote yesterday afternoon and getting mad at the papers. And I thought our people in the paper the only thing that's sensible. And uh, the others have shown pretty good faith. I just was I'm so grateful to all. Mr. President, you know, Washington and we, uh, we 
you have a different idea than what you read in the morning paper, uh, particularly the Post and the New York Times. Give you an example. Give you an example of that. Our Post would be very good. They had a good to pull that conceit of the news. Now he pulled those people who had heard them and seen them. Then he did a poll among those who had not seen it, but had only read it and heard about it in the ah. news. And a sizable majority of them had it unfavorable. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. yeah, the power of instant analysis. Yeah. Yeah. These are just some souvenirs. They're key rings, but some souvenirs from the Oval Office here. I'm sure we all had key rings. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Well, sir, I'm going to lose this key ring next time I lose my keys. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're we're planning, but it has been so long. How many of the people who look at this who's crying? Thank you. You did a great Thank you. You know, when you and I were in the middle there, I, every time there's a group picture of this kind, I have to tell you the same story. Back in my Hollywood days, I got a lesson in acting from Frederick March. Every time there was a Hollywood affair and a group of movie stars and so forth, and they want a group picture. Everybody kind of edged to try and get in the middle. That was the most important. Freddie March would go way over there to the end. And I couldn't understand this. He was a big established star, so I asked him one day, why? Well, he said, no one ever reads the entire caption of the picture. <laughs> We would provide the ammunition and the fuel. And as soon as we were out, the North Vietnamese attacked, violated the treaty. Well, that's and when the president asked the Congress for the money for the ammunition and the fuel that we had promised to supply the agreement, they wouldn't give it. And so we've seen them go all the way to Thailand and conquer everything. And then when the battle started in Angola after the Portuguese left in that county. And the one we went as a group that wanted a democratic Angola, and the other group backed by the Soviet Union. Uh, and again, the president asked the Congress for money to help that other group. They denied the money, and they were 37,000 Finland soldiers in Angola, and it's a common state. And here we are again. some money to help the people who are fighting for freedom. And they're, they're holding out. Mr. President, Senator Law talked to us today at lunch. And he put it, I think, extremely well. Either you go for the Reagan way or you go for the Brezhnev way. And it's about time Congress woke up to that fact. And we took it on the chin yesterday, but it's not over. Uh, no. I've been working on this issue for five years, and we've been down by this many votes before. And uh, uh, we just have to go to work, and uh, you know, maybe we'll get an assistant from San Donis. They've certainly shown that generosity in the past. Well, when I lost them, of course, the thing is, there's enough votes to sustain a veto. And that's that good, that is a veto. But it's the next vote, the next poll on 105 million. Right. You know, I, I, I refuse to believe that that's hopeless, and I, I believe it's not. No, I won't believe it's hopeless either. 
I hope somebody will make Congress face up to the fact that it's either Brezhnev or your way. And that's where you all come in, because as I've said so many times with the legislature, you don't have to make them see the light. Just feel the heat. Too <laughs> sure. <laughs> Too sure. Well, sir, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank all of you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Sure. It's a pleasure, sir. His writing is, it didn't matter about this, wouldn't you think somebody would mention it? It seems that someplace here, he must have been, don't we have six month permits or something? The foreigners here, like a, and he was here for his six months. Well, in her note to Nancy, she said that the six months were up and he was back in his home place outside the country. But this clipping here is what he's referring to. We want a rare water wall. American residents here with a prize. As luck would have it, the biggest group of winners was Irish. According to government figures released over the weekend, Irish applicants won 30, well over 3,100 of the 10,000 immigration slots made available over the next year. And it says that they, they did it by mailing their entry form to the State Department at precisely the lucky moment. A total of 1.3 million applications were received. The sweepstakes was offered under an unusual law designed to help people in 36 countries whose emigration to the United States has decreased since 1965. And for years, all 270,000 immigration slots available each year have been filled by people who are unwilling to have lots of luck. Never heard of any of them. Never heard of them. You know, we passed the immigration bill uh, three years ago. There may have been such a provision in there, but let me check that as a question and I'll find out for you. Not the longest, but no, no, the same. Eisenhower had a longer period of, uh, but he's the only one in history I can remember. And that was right after World War II. But uh, if, if we can, if we can keep this recession. going, sir. Did he close out with a recession? He did. This, oh yeah, he really did. Be from the bird that you were working on some kind of an answer. Yes, we are working. On it. All right. Now, uh, to both letters, as a matter of fact, and. Uh, what I have got in your folder today is the two positions laid side by side, almost in chart form. 
So there's because it is uh, it is confusing. You're talking about on the uh, yeah uh, on the treaty business. Yeah, on the treaty business, just because it keeps coming up time and again. Right? Yeah. So just for a ready reference, put in your drawer someplace. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, we'll get to we'll get an answer to the the bird letter, even though it it might be piecemeal a piecemeal answer. We sent it in one out. We have some. Will Balls acknowledged it and sent out a number of I thought you might like to see the, the photographs of the silkworm. Remember, you may recall yesterday's PDD here. And I look over your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> here's where, it, here's the location. Yeah, two sides there. Well, yeah, they, they make, we think out on that island. Oh. And then on the two sides, possible launches. Um, Can this that thing fire and then move instantly? I was told this morning it could, and that was why that was the reason given for it, the difficulty in taking it out. But uh, uh, I didn't think it was that mobile. I don't, I I don't know. Peter, it is, I think it is mobile, but we would go after the storage sites where they are. They got stocks of them. Mm -hmm. but they have. It is. It is operational. Well, it also, though, very nicely does look as if there wouldn't be any collateral damage. <laughs> that, that's right. Um, got um, the, uh, I've also put in your, in your folder uh, an update on uh, the Ecuador damage. Uh, uh, we are being responsive on the bridges, and the Corps of Engineers is prepared to do anything Pepe's Cordero uh, wishes, but this gives you a more comprehensive uh, picture. Uh, it will require reprogramming some money, as all these things do. Um, but we want to be as supportive as possible. Um, there are signals coming in that uh, uh, Mrs. Thatcher might be willing, or indeed might even like, 